thing, and we are going straight into cringe of the week. All right, first clip of cringe of the week. Antifa brought rifles to a drag show in Texas to make sure the kids were allowed to go inside and tip the dancing trans people. Yep, in Roanoke, Texas. Very important. Here's uh, is there any video from it or just a picture? Um, there's just a picture, which we're showing right now. Um, but there is that video of the mom oh, outside yeah. of it. But you just play that in the background of the mom with the kid with the mask. The mom looks like she's drunk. Like sloppy drunk pig mom. Sloppy drunk pig mom. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting because you've asked Antifa, I'm sure they would be like, it's free speech. Like the drag queens need to do whatever. We have to protect their rights or whatever. But if you had like an Andy No or a Gavin McGinnis speech. It's a no go. Yeah. So it's good to know that Antifa is very passionate about this. Uh, you guys love drag queens, stripping for kids. That's like one of your guys' things. That's cool. Antifa likes that. That's what they're passionate about. Yeah, they are. And I, I had a mixed feelings on this because it's like, yeah, you, you have the right. You have gun rights. That's pretty based. But that and, and that's also the only way you'll get. Mm -hmm. A drag thing secure, right? Like, otherwise, it's going to boil over at some point because uh, these people, obviously, a lot of people are really angry that you're doing this. So, I mean, I don't know. I felt I have yeah. mixed feelings. I'm I'm pro gun. So whatever. I'm happy to see them exercise their Second Amendment rats for their biggest passion, for the things they're passionate about most. Tipping which is fat women. Look at this tripping kids tipping men dressed as women in an inappropriate sex show mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is what Antifa likes. And uh, we, we were talking about this, I think off camera the other day, but there was a video of a drag show in some sort of coffee shop where the kids were mm -hmm. feeling really uncomfortable. Oh yeah. And these And we'll probably find it. And we'll add it. But um, these kids were feeling really uncomfortable in the drag show. And it was hilarious to us because it was like this tiny coffee shop where it's just like a fat guy in a stupid outfit dancing around. Like, drag queens rely on the theater of it, like the big stage, the big yeah. this. Like, it makes it feel like they're doing something. But then when you just get a fat guy in a small room and, like, there's kids around going like this, he's bumping into people's shoulders. Yeah. It really gets disgusting. Lip syncing songs. That room gets hot and musty. Yeah, exactly. And I it smells a like fact. a dude. It's smells like a dude's yeah. body. And then the kids are just like, what is going on? And the moms are like, oh, look, like, watch. This is good. Watch this. It's very dark, very dark. Uh, next, we have a trans person testimonial. This was like a Reddit post, I think. Can you yeah. give it a read? This went super viral and just fits with our show so well, so I'll read it out really quick. Uh, help, reconstructive surgery. Hi, I'm a trans woman in Pennsylvania. I'm 21 years old and got my uh, vaginoplasty and breast augmentation done a few months ago by Kathy Rumor in Philadelphia. Ooh, name and names. Uh, she screwed up big time, and I haven't been able to pee since March 22nd. And I've been forced to use a suprapubic catheter. That sounds like a catheter with extra steps. Uh, it hurts, and I don't like having to use it, but I can't find any surgeon who can fix it so I can pee normally. I have Medicaid, so it would have to be somebody that accepts that. Honest to God, it hurts like hell, and I don't want to be here anymore. I can't run, I can't have sex, or be active. It hurts whenever I drink anything because my bladder is so screwed up and I feel broken. I really, I'd really appreciate it if anyone could help me find a reconstructive surgeon that Medicaid would cover in PA. I'm just about done with this life. Uh, I hate being in pain every single day, and six months uh, down the road, I still haven't found a surgeon to fix this. Isn't that sad? So it's like you are you have some issues already. You're trans, you're gender dysphoria, whatever you want to call it. Probably suicidal already. And then you have this attempted gender-affirming surgery, and it's like imagine how much more suicidal you would be if you had everything that you had before, but now you can't even go to the bathroom and anything that was like normal, everyday routine things your body does, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. That's like Miserable. that's a very bad, dark downward spiral. Yeah. You can't even piss. Uh, and this is all at 21 years old. Yeah. So incredibly dark. Um, yeah. It's, it's kind of getting to the point where like if someone in your life or even tangentially related to you. Like, obviously, we don't have many trans friends over here. Mm. Um, but if, <laughs> you know, hey, I'm just being honest. But uh, if someone is trying, uh, uh, getting close to doing the surgery, people should be doing everything they can to say, just wait, just wait. And it's kind of like a game of delay them until they get over it and yeah. realize, like, hey, I was kind of uh, indo indoctrinated by an online chat room or something. 100p. So, get off the computer a little bit, go walk in the grass, get some sunlight. And do that for as long as you can before you think the surgery is the next best option. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a testimonial now, a video clip of a trans person who's backtracking. 
in the last few years of my life and I realized it's been a complete hell. My life has just went down the hill ever since I had so-called bottom surgery trying to be a woman and I regret it. I regret it 100%. I regret too <clears throat> that I ever thought I was trans, that I ever thought I could be a woman, you know, and I wish I could go back and not have any surgeries or medical transition or take any hormones, to be honest, like, this transition has costed me so much of my health, both mental and physical, as well as certain relationships in my family. Uh, it costed me job opportunities, it costed me a career that I could have had. I don't know if you guys know it, but I do have like two master's degrees and I'm a CPA. And honestly, like this whole transition and my whole like <laughs> trying to be a woman thing completely derailed my life. And um, right now I have osteoporosis, scoliosis, I have a lump in my breast, I have one inch vagina. And uh, what was that? What was that last one? One inch vagina? Yeah. Is that what she oh, said? I think that's what she said. I have no sex drive. I'm trying to do the transition. I'm taking testosterone injection at this point, but I can't grow any facial hair. Like, nothing is happening. I mean, obviously, I still like wearing makeup and stuff, but makeup and hair does not make a woman. So, I've been so delusional for all these years, and I just wish my family and friends weren't so supportive of my transition you know and i wish they that's the key yeah talking. i wish my family and friends weren't so supportive of my transition so this person obviously has issues they tell their family and friends their issues like hey i think i'm a woman or whatever whatever direction they're going and instead of saying oh that's a little different are you sure about that you want to look into that more everyone was probably like yeah yeah you're a woman you're a woman oh here's so and so who did the surgery oh here's some stuff you can inject here's some pills and now it's like to the point where this person's life is ruined. And then now imagine for children. So if they're like, oh, yeah, all the support I got from my family and friends. This is an adult. Who a, made an adult it. who like is smart. Uh, yeah. Two master's degree CPA. Like so you at least have a baseline of intelligence needed to get to those levels. right? hundred percent. So it's like if that person was deceived and was influenced by the support of their family and friends. Imagine what happens to a child who doesn't even fully know what they're taking on when they go on to an, like a journey like this. Amazing point. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. And yeah, it, uh, the it just sounds like a mess. Bottom surgery, like attempted I, bottom surgery. Guys, guys, bottom surgery. Have you seen? I, I encourage everyone to go look at pictures. It's disgusting. They slop shit from here and there, and then they tell you it's a this, but it's not. And it, it's always a botch job. It's always a Frankenstein. Like it's amazing that this, the surgeries even legal are still happening. Uh, it, it's always a botch job. Yeah. It's like a uh, nightmare before Christmas. Like you put somebody's arm on and then you do this and it's like, you see the stitches the whole time. I don't even get it. What That's did not, you think was going to happen? You were going to have a vagina. You yeah. got a hole in your body now, dude. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. Even. Is nightmare before Christmas. The, those skinny, weird people. Mm hmm. I never liked that. That's okay. Who's the wh famous director does those? What's his name? Uh, you don't have to look it up. It's that famous guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Edward Scissorhands. Nightmare Before Christmas. I Sorry. never was a huge fan. I used to not like that. Yeah, I know. It gives me bad vibes. It just didn't seem Christmassy to me growing up. So never a huge fan. Uh, Tim Burton. Tim, Tim Burton. Burton. Sorry, yeah. guys, that was bad. Jeez, we try not to do that. I know that's like my pet peeve. With and we podcasts. never do that. Yeah. we never do that. Very rarely. We, we don't have any fat on this show besides on the, my body, <laughs> but we try to keep. The, <laughs> and me, and we, me. We, we try to we try to slice out the fat. Never waste anyone's time. I think a lot of people with podcasts and like streaming. I feel like the whole show is them just like looking things up or like, oh yeah, what was that? Like, look you see it that up. movie? When that come out? Like, oh, pull this up. Okay, let me oh. let me go check. Oh yeah. It was the movie Ants in 2012. It's like, well, you know, it's a waste of time. It's yeah. just like I have too much respect for the audience to waste their time mm -hmm. with stuff like that. Uh, next clip, the the guy who's doing the surgery on the 13-year-olds. He's made $20 million doing it. So I'm uh, super committed to gender surgery. In the past, I used to do cosmetic surgery. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon. And I've always been drawn to things that are deeply impactful. 
in the GCC, Gender Confirmation Center in San Francisco, we kind of have these like secret missions. Now, now that it's on a slide, these public secret missions, which are uh, one of them is that we try to we try to live with our values 30 to 40 years in the future. So and that puts us in a mindset of um, extreme affirmation, because affirmation at that time is a foregone conclusion. This is a time in the future when gender is just a thing. Nobody makes a big deal out of it. People are being screened as children and adolescents for their gender their journey and appropriate steps are taken to get them involved in a multidisciplinary process to get them where they need to go. That's that's the future. Um, I do not have a minimum age of any sort in my practice. There's no chronological age that says you don't get surgery. Now, having said that, I don't think I've ever done a consult on a 12 year old yet, but we would if one came our way, we just haven't had reason to. Um, and then we've done a number of 13 year olds who, are, who we did consults on. I think I've done one or two 13 year old surgeries. For the most part, it's 14 and up that by the time everything comes together, plus insurance approval, plus everything that surgery actually gets completed. Mm. Um, we do not- require- Done? Yeah. What would, uh, what would Tony Soprano do? If you heard that, he's a children, yeah, the babies, yeah, he he would not, he would twelve leave. years old, the babies, yeah. Um, this guy just admitted to crimes on camera. Is that? Am I getting that? Yeah, I, I love the phrase too. Like, uh, we have uh, affirmation is a foregone conclusion. We think thirty years into the future, uh, everyone's gender journey. It's like we just showed you two gender journeys, and it ended with one guy who couldn't piss and another guy who's uh, got a one inch vagina. So. All roads lead to bad ends to that journey, guys. Yeah, we should uh, account for both sides of the gender journey 30 to 40 years in the future. So it's like out of those people in the future, a lot of them are probably dead from suicide. A lot of them are probably back to their original gender. And a lot of them are probably the gender that they got surgery to become and then not happy. Yeah. So it's like I don't see all these positive uh, scenarios and positive examples of like these gender reassignment surgeries going well. Hey, it, dude, if... If there was some sort of magic button alien type surgery that gave you a penis, it switched you exactly to a man version of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, we can talk. This is a plastic surgeon. This guy puts bolted on tits on women, lip fillers, whatever else. And now he's like, yeah, I think I can switch to the penis shit. Yeah. You know what Working I mean? Working on kids. I haven't had a 12 year old, but I, I would. 12 years old. So uh, the fact that this isn't a crime and this guy's like so deep in his San Francisco gender affirming care situation, I think he forgets that he's like, well, now it's public now. It's like, yeah, and it's getting sent around yeah. to everybody. And uh, it's lawmakers, not just your boys. It's not just your boys. Yeah. You're like, yeah, good job. Yeah. And lawmakers are coming in hot with like a reason to arrest you or to take your license, dude, because it should be gone as it should be. And look at this graph. This is a um, a picture of the map of the U.S., Gender clinics from 2017 versus 2022, 2017, there's basically none. 2022, the map is full. Unbelievable. Yeah. Speaking of map, this is actually a different type of map. This was a secret recording from a school, I believe, in Texas. Uh, Yeah. An English teacher at uh, Franklin High School in El Paso, Texas. Stop calling them that. You're not allowed to label people like that. Stop it. Diego. Yeah, no We're not going to call them that. We're going to call them maps. No. Minor attracted persons. No. So don't judge people just because they want to have sex with a five-year-old. Oh. So don't judge people because they want to have sex with a five-year-old. Don't call them pedos. Call them maps. Minor attracted person. I like the audible uh, dissent. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. No. Like, you can't. You literally can't say this, lady. You're insane. Yeah. Uh, like, and imagine stepping so out of bounds, like, uh, this is an English teacher. I don't know. They're high schoolers. Uh, P A S T versus past P A S S E D. You mm-hmm. know, get some of those good, some of those good easy ones in English. You know, show them the first Shakespeare. Imagine correcting someone on the, what they call pedophiles and losing all your in class credibility based on that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like hundred percent. If 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 someone says something stupid like this, are you going to listen to them on the next thing? Mm, yeah, that person, we've seen Justin Awad and what happens with all the people and what they're learning in school. I think yeah. if you went in there and asked a couple of questions, like, hey, point to this on the, a real map, point to this country, no one knows it. Yeah. They, know, they know the other map, though. They know what mm-hmm. map means. Uh, let's get out and of- How about her example, too? A five-year-old? It's like, you could- A five-year-old yeah. lady? Dis- so disrespectful. So, um, and it's like, that's like the worst of the worst. 
Like yeah. five year olds are completely most vulnerable people. It's not like you're saying teenager and they're in high school or something, and it's like still inappropriate and wrong. Yeah, it's like you're talking about people who are attracted to five year olds and like trying to give a softer term for them. Yeah. Mm. Let's lighten it up. Um, and certain things are just disqualifying. Like obviously me, like us on a podcast, uh, if I was a teacher of some sort of students, I wouldn't say anything. Wouldn't yeah. say any of our opinions on s- stuff like this. I would teach the curriculum. Every kid has a phone in their hand too. Yeah. It's like, you're done. You're, you're that getting should, recorded. Yeah. yeah. That lady should be immediately, obviously fired. Yeah. Uh, let's get out of the trans stuff and into some more cringe guy tackles kid at football practice. So this is a kid at football practice. And just gets absolutely wrecked by this adult. The kid doesn't even know a three, how to do a correct three-point stance. Yeah, he's waiting there to get lit up by dad. And then Ooh. this guy comes rumbling down and does a, a full spear tackle. Yeah, this is probably that kid's first core memory. <laughs> if you had to think about it. The first thing is he's a kid's like five years old or seven years old or something. It's probably the first thing he remembers. This uh, is how you get someone to quit football. <laughs> yeah, immediately. The kid thinks this is going to happen to him on the field. So Yeah, and then this guy who did the tackling, he probably would have gone pro if he didn't hurt his knee. Mm. And then he probably had a kid, so it's like it's probably the kid's fault that this guy didn't go pro, but he yeah. still has it. It's also his wife's fault. Yeah. It's also why he drinks so much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> this guy still has it. But uh, I actually have a core memory like that. When I was a little kid playing soccer and like a dad was playing with us and there was like a situation where uh, there was a – a ball at the goal and I got smoked. I by just the got, dad? yeah, by the dad. Wow. So that's, I, you're absolutely right. Core memory shit right there. Yeah. That's some core memory stuff. And then your life started after that. <laughs> and your first memory is getting lit up on the soccer field. Exactly. And it makes you wonder, which we've been wondering a lot this episode, because we've been watching the Sopranos. What would Tony Soprano do? If he saw the coach do that to the yeah. kid, he'd say, Whoa, Jesus Christ. I think he would probably put the guy in like, and to tie him to a tree and then they like, drive a car into him or something. That Tony Soprano never did anything like that. No? Yeah. Well, I like to imagine. Okay. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Gorditas is offensive to fat fucks now. A new video. The Latinx community is now rallying to change the name of Gorditas. They're saying that that name offends overweight people. And they're reportedly planning to change the name to Masa con Relleno or Masa Frita. Keep in mind that this food dates back all the way to the 1500s. And this is not the first time that the community demanded a name change. Because back in 2013, they changed the name of Negritos to Nitos. Interesting. So it looks like the Hispanic community is next up on the cultural Marxism PC chopping block. The woke list, The woke will. list, yeah. Why won't these white people stop colonizing the Hispanics? These white leftists are now trying to change the names and control the language of these Hispanic people. Luckily, the Hispanic people have a lot of strong dads in their in their societies and culture. Yeah, you're a right. Bit harder. The homogenization, like the wokeness, is new age colonization. You have to yeah. think like this. You have to change your name. That's actually a good point. Changing culture, changing the traditions you had, changing the food you eat because it's offensive to fat people. Or maybe like 0.01% of the population has a problem yeah. with it. And gorditas so. is what? It just means fatties or something? Little fatties or dear fatty, I think. Gordo, gorda is fat. And then ita at the end is like a little... <laughs> uh, it's a little either, fatty. Yeah, it's a little fatty. So <laughs> I don't I don't think it's I don't even get it. So Hispanics, you're up next on the chopping on the PC chopping block. Black is negro in Spanish. Mm. Everything is gendered. Language yeah. itself is gendered. So I don't know. Might might be new Spanish class in 2035. hundred percent. There's gonna be a revamping of everything Hispanic. I think there has to be. It's very problematic. They're definitely they're definitely a voting block that the uh, Marxist types want to conquer. Mm -hmm. Then they want to divide. So uh, we're seeing it. Stand tall, Latino dads. Stand tall. Now's the time. Uh, Last thing. It's not a clip. It's a DM I got. I got a DM from somebody. Can you read it? And you'll kind of get the gist of it. Yeah, it says, uh, bruh, your channel has made me so depressed. I want someone to pack me and ship me off to Antarctica or something. How do you wake up every day looking at dumbasses like that and still have a good day? Well, I get that question a lot. It's like, are we screwed? People try to get... Um, people are getting a little more uh, black pilled, meaning they're kind of like nihilistic and like seeing that there's no hope. And there are a lot of people ask, like, how do you stay white pilled? How do you stay positive and uplifting or whatever? And I think it's a mindset thing. You kind of have to be. 
You have to assume good is going to win. You have to assume God is going to win in the end. How? I don't know. A miracle is going to happen. Maybe. That's possible. It's not out of the question. But you kind of have to just go about it with a positive mindset because you might as well. Because if you don't, then we're really fucked. There's there's also, I'll add my two cents, because yeah, yeah. the, there's also like a scarcity mindset. Like, well, dude, what if I say this to my friends? Like, they're not my friends anymore. It's like, there are so many people out there that think like us. And they might not go out on a stump and say it like, I disagree with this. It's like, we roast these people. Humor and a strong base foundation of like principles and beliefs through God, through religion. 100p. And like, just we're, we're here to have fun. I'm not I'm not taking this seriously. Yeah, uh, it's sad that the trans people botched it. They mm-hmm. messed up their lives. But, you know, I, I'm not. But if I'm we having put a, a good time. But if we put a light on it in, in a playful way, hopefully it'll prevent future people from making the same mistake. Mm-hmm. And in the end, good will win. How is it going to play out? Nobody fully knows. But you have to have a positive mindset because if you have a negative mindset, then you really don't have a chance. I don't fully know how it's going to play out, but... I'm planning on hopefully entertaining everybody while it does. Exactly. And then don't get involved in experiments. Like that's what it seems Mm. like is a a common theme. It's like they're experimenting with kids' genders. They're experimenting uh, with just unfettered immigration at the border. And pharmaceutical drugs and preventative things for certain diseases. We're experimenting with a vaccine. Actually, we can talk about that now, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube just loosened up uh, their vaccine thing. Uh, So... But yeah, it, don't don't fall into these experiments, you know, yeah. and stay strong and be like, all right, we were joking. Uh, the people people who get killed by fentanyl, right? Mm-hmm. There's that chalk fentanyl that was coming on, and it's like, imagine being around a coke table, people doing coke, and it's like cut with fentanyl or something, and it's like, yeah, you guys go ahead. I'm gonna wait ten minutes, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Yeah, and it's like last. everybody dies from fentanyl, uh, and you're like, all right, I'm last. And obviously, we we don't do cocaine, but yeah. uh, it's a funny bit. Um, and that's that's the same thing that's happening with society. It's like you guys go ahead, you experiment with your kids. I'm gonna stick to the core. I'm at Catholic school. I'm at this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and let th- everyone's gonna come back. It's exactly. it's all gonna swing back. You think the kid with the two trans moms is gonna? not have some resentment and start uh, telling their story of how bad it was for them. Or the kids that get anxiety from nothing, uh, they're going to be the ones that, what, take the world over? Exactly. So everything will come back. The pendulum will swing back, and then there will be a power vacuum eventually, and it'll be filled by the schizo types, like we said, and people that have the good fundamentals and traditional values that got us to this point already. Don't feel like you're missing out. If you say your opinions and lose friends or family, that's totally fine. The love you receive from the right will always outweigh the hate from the left. So don't feel like you're stuck. Life is going to be okay. Which takes us to our 